Alrighty, pages uh, 8 through 10 are considered the virtual genetics lab in your packets, and uh, this video is going to take you through the lab. So on page 8 at the top of your lab, it says, The purpose of this laboratory is to use traits to further your understanding of genetics and heredity. Genetic traits can be used to illustrate a number of genetic principles, such as dominance, recessiveness, and sex linkage. In this laboratory, you'll restrict yourself to some uh, readily observable physical traits that are believed to be caused by single genes, meaning they're monohybrid crosses or monogenetic traits, and uh, they're not subject to environmental modification. Uh, and a benefit of investigating monogenetic traits is that it's possible to make predictions about an individual's genotype based upon their observable phenotypes. Remember, genotype is the letters, phenotype is what you actually see. For example, if a person has a trait that is known to be caused by a pair of recessive genes, then we could say with some confidence that the individual is homozygous for that trait. So it says using the table below, and that table is going to be on page 9 actually in your labs, you're going to determine your phenotype for each trait and make a prediction concerning your possible genotypes. The following characteristics will be looked at. So here's the first one, all right? You see attached versus free earlobes. Now, you can see that on the right here. Uh, dominant earlobes are, are the free earlobes, okay? And so, uh, we just have to look at your ears and, dis and determine to determine if you are free or attached. So, you should do that. And then what we could do is we could figure out the genotype pretty darn easily. Uh, if your phenotype is attached, meaning you have the type of earlobes that are on the left, then what ends up happening is you will see how they're like attached at the bottom, okay? And so right here, all right? And so what ends up happening is that is a recessive trait if you have that. And so the only way to have something that is recessive is to have a recessive from mom and a recessive allele from dad. Therefore, you would be little e, little e. Now, why am I using E's? That's because on page 8, if you read the lab, it tells you to use E's for your letter. And it's recessive, that's why I'm using a lowercase e. Now, if your phenotype is free, right, right, the type on the right, like right here, then what ends up happening is you have at least one dominant letter. So it's a little bit more complicated, and so because of that, I want you to talk to your parents. I want you to talk to as many of your parents as you possibly can. If you can only get one parent, okay, to tell you verifiably that they also have dominant, uh, then I would say you're heterozygous. Also, if you have a dominant trait like free earlobes, but your parent has attached, I would also say you're hetero heterozygous. The only way that I could would say that you're dominant and that you are homozygous dominant is if you and both parents are dominant. So then I want you to find page nine. And you're going to see where it says, put a check where your phenotype is. Well, I have free earlobes, okay? So therefore, I put a check right here for free. That means I have a dominant uh, letter, at least one uppercase E. However, both my parents have free earlobes as well. Therefore, I am big E and big E. As far as counting the number of students in the class, well, we can't do that right now uh, due to the fact that you're not physically there. You are now going to go through the rest of this video and you are going to continue to be checking your phenotypes in this column here. And you are going to be writing in your genotypes here. And we're not going to worry about the last column. But you're going to fill in these first two as we go. Alrighty, now let's look at Widow's Peak. Uh, we got Keanu Reeves here and uh, Ben Affleck to help us. So what ends up happening here, okay, dominant, uh, Widow's Peak is a dominant trait, okay? So you can see here that Keanu right here has the dominant Widow's Peak. It's right there. So it sticks down, okay? Whereas you can see that is not present here for Ben Affleck. So what happens for the dominant trait, Widow's Peak? We're going to use a W, as the lab says. And so Keanu Reeves would have at least one capital W, and his other letter would be determined by his parents if he was doing this lab. Um, we know what Ben Affleck says, right? Because he is straight. So if he has a, uh, as a recessive allele for Widow's Peak, therefore he must be little w, little w. 
All right, the next trait is uh, tongue rolling. Tongue rolling is a dominant gene. So on the left is dominant, but if you cannot, it is recessive on the, on, or it's dominant on the left here, and it is recessive on the right. So you're gonna go on to page nine. You're gonna check the phenotype. Either you can tongue roll or you're a non-tongue roller, and you're going to put your genotype. If you're a tongue roller, right, you are at least one capital R. Uh, and then the other one will be based upon your parents. If you are a non-tongue roller, you have to be little r, little r, because it's recessive. All right, from now on, I'm just going to go over the traits, and then I'm going to let you now figure out if you're dominant or recessive for them. Uh, the next thing that is on our list, okay, is bent little finger. So with bent little finger, if you put your hand straight out, if you look at the very top of your pinky, what will end up happening is, this is really extreme right here, but if your top of your pinky curves to the point where like if it kept going, it would cut off the top, then you are positive or you have bent little pinky and it's a dominant trait. Or you could be straight, which is recessive. So right now I want you to look at yours, figure out which one you are, bent or straight. Then I want you to figure out, are you capital B? Um, and then something, or are you little b, little b, or whatever it might be. You are then going to go on page nine. You're going to check your phenotype and write in your genotype. Hitchhiker's thumb is always a fun one. Uh, hitchhiker's thumb is caused by a recessive trait. So you could see on the right where the hitchhiker's thumb is present. On the left, you see regular. Hitchhiker's thumb is going to have a real, real curve to it. Not just a little bit. I mean, this thing bends back almost at a 45 degree angle. So right now, figure out if you have it or don't. And then on page nine, I want you to check your phenotype and write in your genotype after you look at yours and your parents. Alrighty, this is what long palmer muscle looks like, okay? Uh, it is, a if you're homozygous, okay, recessive, it means it is present. So you have this condition here. If it's absent, you are here and you have the dominant trait. So right now, I want you for long palmer muscle to figure out what you have. Then I want you to figure out what your parents are. And on page nine, check your phenotype. And then based upon you and your parents, write in your genotype. All right, next let's talk about pigmented iris, okay? Uh, let's see, if you have no pigment, then the default is blue eyes, okay? If you have a color to your eyes, whether that's green, whether that's brown, et cetera, et cetera, then you have pigment. Pigment is dominant. So right now, figure out what you have, figure out what your parents are, and fill in the information on page nine. Okay, now mid-digit hair. Uh, mid-digit hair means you're gonna look at your middle knuckle. And in your middle knuckle, if you have hair there, it is a dominant trait, okay, as you can see in the picture on the left. And if you do not, it's the uh, one on the right. So, page nine, check your phenotype, talk to your parents, figure out what your genotype is. All right, now we're going to skip to number 10. So what I usually have my students do on number 10, okay, is this one asks about when you interlock your thumbs in your hands, do you have your left thumb over your right thumb or your right thumb over your left? And what I try to do is have my students, like, try to take their brain out of it, right? So what I do is I clap, 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 clap close my hands. And I have my left hand over my, uh, my right, okay? Left over right is dominant, Right over left is recessive. Right now, I'd like you to do that. And then I'd like you to check your phenotype and uh, figure out your genotype with your parents. All right, the last trait's kind of an interesting one. It talks about your index finger and your ring finger. Um, this particular trait actually has also um, a sex component to it meaning uh, it's different for males and females. You can also see from this New York Post uh, uh, image, you know, there are some things that are hypothesized to be more frequent depending on what you have. So what you're going to do is you're going to identify yourself. Uh, then what you're going to do is you are then going to uh, check your phenotype. Remember, if you're a male or a female, you also need to note that on page nine and make sure you check in the appropriate place and uh, go from there. And then uh, do the genotype according to your parents. 
Alrighty, so what do your uh, results look like? These are my particular results. I had to call my parents and, and figure out some things along with them. And uh, that's that. So now it's on to page 10. Alrighty, now when we turn to page 10, here's what we're going to do. We are going to have you cross your genotype with yourself. So what ends up happening is for earlobes, right, I was biggie, biggie. So therefore, I put that for both of them. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a Punnett square. And my Punnett square would look something like this. So you could see here, right, that biggie, biggie, 50% of the time, 50% of the time. Therefore, that was that one and that one. That was that. That one was that one. There's this big E that's there. This big E is right there. And what happens is the genotypic ratio is all big E, big E. All uh, phenotypic ratio is all free earlobes. And what's going to happen is you're going to write that in right there. So it looks like that. And you've now completed the first thing. You are now going to continue that for the rest of the traits, filling in the rest of this chart as you go, and you will have completed the lab, pages 8 through 10. And so here are the final results for my personal lab. Yours will look a little different. Note the whole uh, second finger and fourth finger is not a part of this chart. You have now completed the lab for pages 8 through 10, virtual genetics, and hopefully you learned a little about monogenetic traits.